What's the difference between garrison and reinforcement? Um, well, that's a good question. When you garrison somebody, that means that whatever attacks they're going to take is going to hit your troops only first and then hit the army. When you reinforce, your troops become part of their army. So it's it's two different types of help. Um, so you have to you have to plan out which one you want to do if you want to do both, uh, because a lot of times when you reinforce, it, that can help the uh, somebody take a rally. But if you garrison, you gotta you gotta keep in mind that when you garrison, the rally is going to hit your solo march first. But that can make a big difference, especially like for instance, if they're going with a range rally, and your garrison takes out all their fluff troops, meaning the infantry cavalry. Then by the time the range gets to the uh, to your guildmate, for instance, if it's all range that's left, then they're gonna run out in an infantry phalanx and essentially counter them. So there's stuff like that that you have to keep in mind. <laughs> can you garrison a trap? Wait, can you garrison trap? Are you saying like can you set traps with garrisons? Absolutely, absolutely. Actually, one of the more common things to do nowadays, or I guess for a while now, is if you ever have somebody zeroed, right, and they have a lot of resources that a lot of people start farming, one thing to do is to reinforce uh, that castle and then take like two or three hits. And essentially, they're probably going to be sending leaderless marches. So you're going to be racking up the kills easily like that because they may not see uh, you marching as a garrison. And uh, it's an easy way to get kills to get people out of... Uh, uh, out of uh, position and all that, so uh, it's it's something to keep in mind. A garrison can be very very powerful if used right. Okay, Queen Vivis Vivicia is in there. All you have to do is get like one reinforcement. There he goes. There it goes, Miss Devi. There we go. Final. There we go. All right. There we go. Finally, SOC wants to win now. So now they have to rally it, and I don't think anybody here can even get a rally half together. So they're going to be there for a while, it looks like. Finally. What? Oh, don't tell me they sent all infantry in here. I, I, saw, I saw she had all infantry gear. But to get hit out by all calves, you know what? This chalice... Is a good indication of like things not to do okay when you're trying to fill a fort and trying for it not to get soloed don't send a one troop march because that's just not gonna go far are you going infantry again she's going infantry again why wouldn't you send mix that's so much harder to hit out okay so now she's gonna get hit by calves I'm willing to bet it Okay, so they're gonna get reinforcements again. Um, I wish I was there to be able to scout, but it's just it's just confusing why they would do that. Oh, there we go. She finally switched to a mixed gear. Okay, all right. Now we're talking. All right. Looks like they figured it out. They figured it out. Um. Like 20 minutes into Chalice, they figured it out. If you guys could change something from Chalice that will make it more attractive, but not have all these like maxed out 135 stars people always trying to win, what would you say you would change? Because I, I feel like they're right there. It just maybe needs a tweak or two to make it like really, really interesting where you won't see what what is this like 20 castles out of 10 or 15 kingdoms. It's just something is missing, but you can't give too much or you'll have the same people winning Baron winning this too. So, hmm. Might limits? I could see I could see that working. The only problem is that remember might doesn't necessarily represent how strong you are. I could be 500 million might and have full champ. You know? Like that's that's the only difference. Like yeah. Everyone has the same stats. Yo, that's actually... That's really interesting. Everyone has the same stats. So, 
when you win this and you have this prestige title, it's not so much I had the best gear, but I, I outplayed everybody. That's really an interesting thought right there. My cap, like I said, might doesn't represent how strong you are, so it, it wouldn't matter. Like, there's 600 million might people that have full champ. Like, it, that's not gonna change anything. It'll take, it'll keep out like the huge, huge guys, but still. But I, you know that that um that suggestion where everybody is on equal footing, and you're kind of just fighting for this. That's actually not a bad. That's not bad. It might be hard to implement though, because how do you how do you even like do you port in and you just have no gear or how would that work? I don't know. But still, that's that's a good idea. That's a that's a decent idea. I like that. Hey Ava, I have a mixed stat of 319, 316, 341. What kind of range should I ask and what phalanx should I use? Sorry man, I cannot help you with that. I cannot tell you what range you should get or what phalanx you should be without knowing what's rallying you. This game is not so uh, like black and white. If like, cause if I tell you take infantry reinforcements and take it an infantry phalanx and a cavalry rally's coming at you. Oh, well. That's definitely not the right answer, is it? So you gotta look at it like rock, paper, scissors, right? If a cavalry rally is coming at you, you gotta go range, etc., etc. So I, I can't answer that without knowing way more information. There is no right answer when it, when it comes to taking a rally. There is no right answer until you know what's coming, because that's the only way to uh, you know counter what's coming, etc. So yeah, don't 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 get hung up on well I always take this reinforcement or I always take it in this formation. There's no such thing. When you're taking a rally, you need to be able to change it on the fly. Maybe not so much reinforcements, but at least the formation. Um, one thing I will say about reinforcements though is you gotta you gotta keep in mind what kind of reinforcements would be ideal for you. For instance, when a rally is hitting you. The first troops that are going to die are usually the lower tier troops. And in most cases, that means T2, right? So if, you, if it's one rally coming at you, I would recommend taking T2 uh, reinforcements of whatever front line you're going to have. Because that's going to cut down on your losses a lot. But if you're taking multiple rallies, meaning 5, 6, 10, whatever. Maybe it's a rally party coming at you. I would not recommend taking T2 reinforcements because that T2 reinforcement is going to be gone after the first rally. And then the next 8 or 9 or however many, you have no reinforcements. Whereas if you take T4 or T5 reinforcements, you're going to have those reinforcements throughout. So it's just something to think about because T4 and T5 won't die right away. So they're, they'll be there to help you in more rallies than just that initial one. So... Stuff like that that you got to think about on the fly when you're being rallied. I know that if 10 rallies are set at you, you, you might be uh, stressed out, etc. But these are things that you have to keep into account when stuff like that is happening. You have five minutes. You have five minutes to think all of it through. So just keep in mind. Which is the best five familiars you recommend when soloing? It depends. See... A lot of times, the, the way that you guys ask these questions, I can't really answer because there's so much information missing. Like, what five familiars are the best to hit with? But what are you hitting with? For instance, I, I'll give you an example, right? So, if I go infantry, these are the five familiars that I would hit with. Um, a lot of people would also use the shield familiar, uh, but it just depends what you're hitting. Uh, so, these are the five familiars I would, hit, I would use for infantry, but then if you go cav they change the only one that technically would stay the same in my formation is the griffin and tempest type that's it the other three change depending on what you're sending and then of course if you're sending uh like for a fort it changes once again because now it's mixed instead of one troop type but uh i'll tell you what i'll tell you what these tier 5 familiars they're so strong <laughs> they these, the 600% familiars, they're so strong. And these ones right here, the 150%, they're not as strong because it's more over time, but they're still super, super strong. 
And I actually had somebody ask me the other day, how come the 600% familiars are favored over the uh, the 150%? Because if you think about it, the 600% happens once, right? Whereas 150% happens uh, five times. So if you add it all up, that's actually 750% compared to 600. So how come this one isn't considered more? Well, the reason why that is, is because this is over time. It's every four seconds. So you would basically need prob about 20 seconds for all of the 750% damage to happen. Whereas this is kind of like one big nuke. And if you guys know much about the troops, I'd rather have a very strong nuke that would cut down their, uh, their army size right away. Because that means that for the next 20 seconds, they're going to have way less damage. They're going to do way less damage. So this uh, overall will come out ahead. Uh, but this is still really, really strong as far as like consistent damage. Um, they're, they're very close, but 600% familiars are definitely much better. And they're also not bad for defending um, because it, they trigger once you lose 4% of your troops, which is not a lot. Uh, if you're getting rallied, 4% is not a lot if unless you have like a, a stupid amount of troops, right? Like unless you have like 60 million, 50 million troops, 4% is not a lot. So they can trigger much easier than here, whereas 8%, it's double the troops. So just something to keep in mind. I mean, there, there's the good thing is, is that there are some fairly um, good familiars even for free to play. Uh, like, for instance, if I was free to play, right, and I was trying to get some familiars, Evil Weevil would be one of the first ones that I would go for. An army max HP by 15%, that is a very nice increase. And then the other one, um, where is it? Where is it? Is it Aquarius? Yes, Aquarius. So Evil Weevil and Aquarius. Um, that basically leaves you a 30% HP difference. Because you're adding 15% to yourself and you're reducing 15% to the enemy. That's 30% army mass HP. That's not bad. And they're fairly easy to get. Um, if you get enough of the red orbs, etc. You, you get a lot of red orbs in general from like cargo ship. Um, what do we got here? 40,000 holy stars. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, so yeah, those are the two main familiars that I would go for if I was free to play. I would focus on What's the difference between attack and HP? Well, one is offensive, one is defensive. But if you want to get more technical than that, attack is usually more... Um, it's preferred over HP just because it's much harder to get attack over HP. I'll give you an example, right? So if you look at my gear, it's mainly champ and then some cups, right? But if you take a look at army attack compared to army HP... That's a big difference. 234% army HP compared to 49% army attack. So army attack is much harder to get. And the attacking stats are used more for rallying, etc. Just because of the familiars. Because, I'll give you an example. Um, let's say you're using Gargantua. We go back to this, right? It'll deal 600% damage based on your initial cavalry attack. So the higher your cavalry attack, the more this will do. So it's kind of like twofold. The more attack you have, the more damage you'll do in general, but the more damage your familiars are going to do as well. Um, same with uh, the stacking familiars, right? So if you look at Goblin, you get a cavalry attack by 100% when 10% of your cavalry troops have fallen, meaning the higher HP that you have, uh, the, the longer this is going to take to proc. So it's... It's kind of like a balancing act. There's really H. There's nothing wrong with HP, but attack is usually uh, comes out being better than HP. But if you can, if you can get both, if you can get both, and not wrong with that, attack is always best defense. That's true. If you if you are to weigh attack, HP, and defense, defense is by far the worst one. Is it still useful? Sure, but nowhere near. As much as attack and HP. Um, and I think... I think... 
IgG themselves kind of realize this, because if you take a look at these buildings, right? Infirmaries. At 25, it gives you 5%. Oh, hold on. You can't even see it. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. Okay. So an infirmary at level 25 gives you 5% army max HP. Some of you may not even know that, but these buildings maxed out gives you stats. 5% max HP at 25, right? A manor at 25 gives you 2% army attack. So if we're trying to have an equal, right? This is pretty much like IGG showing you army attack is better than HP because it's giving you less than half of the HP. But if you go over to the barracks, if I can actually click out, there we go. The barracks gives you defense. And uh, would you look at that? It gives you 10 percent so again you go army attack two percent army hp five percent army defense ten percent per level 25 building so even igg is kind of letting you know okay this is how we pretty much weigh these stats and honestly i would i would take three percent hp over ten percent defense but that's another story this just gives you an idea of how uh, weighted these, these stats are and which ones you should focus more on. Uh, where do you put your talent points for a mix set? Uh, well, it depends. Mine is a little bit different because I was trying to go for a 442. But for instance, um, so 442, right? You should, you should always get the last, what, four or five? Yeah. Squad health, offense, defense. Defense here don't 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 get it the reason why you don't get the squad defense is because those 50 points you can then uh instead put on on offense which will give you more uh more bang for your buck if you will so this is how i set it up squad health you should always get squad defense just get enough to advance to the next one and then uh the rest is uh, of course army attack you always should get and then the rest i was just kind of balancing out my stats to kind of make it a, a good 4-4-2. But you can, you can try to balance out your stats a little bit. Depending on what you have. 